Not too long ago, I made a video where I restructured the DCU to fit with the structure of the MCU, making it more cohesive and a more complete cinematic universe. I did this because the DCU is kind of a bit of a mess, I mean it has some good movies, but it never, or at least lately, hasn't felt like much of a universe. This however was before Peacemaker, in, in fact it was before Peacemaker even debuted, and now Peacemaker has ended its first season, and I kind of changed my opinion on that completely. I think that the DCU has been saved by this one season of television that I'll talk about in this video. Fair warning, there are spoilers for the entirety of the first season of Peacemaker, so if you haven't seen it yet, I would definitely recommend that you do, and then come back to this video. First of all, a short review for the show because this video isn't really a review, it's more so how it affected the DCEU and things like that, but in terms of my very short review that I'll talk about here, I thought it was absolutely fantastic, it was really well written with some awesome characters, including probably my favorite character in the entirety of the DC Universe, Vigilante, the DC Extended Universe that is, I mean he's hilarious and so is the entirety of the show, with some great action scenes, some high quality CGI for a TV show, and a great emotional through line with Peacemaker's backstory and especially his relationship with his father, and it also had an absolutely fantastic season finale, I thought it was just an awesome show all around, and one of the best shows that DC has ever given us, and probably the best thing the DCU has done so far. All that being said, one thing I found myself really enjoying over the course of the season was the various references to the larger DC universe, and there were a lot of them, whether that be the already established characters in the DCU or new characters who are from the comics, but have yet to be confirmed to exist in this universe until now. Peacemaker told just crazy stories about basically every member of the Justice League, except for I think Cyborg, to the point where it became a running gag that they referenced in the finale. I was a bit taken aback when Adebayo mentioned the Justice League in the finale, not only because that cleared up a bit of a plot hole, which is why doesn't the Justice League deal with this alien invasion, they did explain that, but also because the Justice League is a bit of a sore subject in the DCU, so I thought they would stray away from them. And not only did they not stray away from mentioning them, but they actually showed up. This is something that blew me away. Probably the most impressive thing they did in this show in, at all is that they actually had the Justice League show up. This is basically their first appearance in canon since their movie. They haven't really existed in this universe since then. It was It's just been like individual adventures. Well, the Justice League are, are out there somewhere, I guess but they actually appeared as a team, at least four of them did, in the season finale. We see the silhouettes of Superman, Wonder Woman, Flash, and Aquaman, and I don't know really why Batman and Cyborg aren't there, probably something that Warner Brothers mandated, but even seeing these four, my jaw dropped like straight off. This is just something that I'm not used to. As an avid follower of the Arrowverse for like a decade, seeing the Justice League just casually show up in a live action TV show was so refreshing, and having them mention all these other superheroes, including ones that don't even exist in the universe, and not really having any restrictions on what they can or can't say, or even show, it was super super refreshing after watching the Arrowverse for 10 years. But it didn't even stop there, Aquaman and Flash actually showed up in person with their actors in their suits, they had lines and everything in this Peacemaker TV show. They actually filmed Jason Momo and Ezra Miller, and seeing this just got me so hyped. This was the first time, genuinely, that I felt any excitement about the DCU in such a long time. I mean, I liked Aquaman, I liked Shazam, I didn't really like Birds of Prey or Wonder Woman 1984, but you know, I liked the Suicide Squad, but all of those felt very self-contained. Shazam did reference the DCU a lot, and Superman kind of appeared at the end, but it wasn't nearly as cool because we didn't actually see him and it was just Superman that appeared. I really like Zack Snyder's Justice League as well, but that's not really canon, and Warner Brothers isn't really going forward with it, even though it is a much better version of the Justice League movie. But this is the core of the cinematic universe showing up in a 100% canon present day project that happens after the first movie, so it's the first time the Justice League has showed up since then, and I got genuinely excited. It was so cool seeing these characters. It was the first time in years where the DCU felt like a universe instead of a bunch of random movies that have no connection to each other, and never will. It felt like a world where the Justice League were out there, to the point where when they did show up, it made sense. I mean, there is this alien invasion going on, you would think the Justice League would show up. In fact, if they didn't show up, it would make so much less sense that they kind of had to do it. Their appearance just felt so organic, 
and the fact that the Justice League appeared for the first time since their movie just makes the universe feel alive. Not only that, but this is actually a really good interpretation of the Justice League. Initially, they show up, they're these silhouettes, these godlike figures, but then Aquaman and Flash actually get lines in this very human grounded exchange that makes them feel like people, which is I think what the Justice League are, they're people with godlike powers they're not gods this scene nailed at least for aquaman and the flash it would have been cool to see henry cavill and gal gadot in this scene as well plus cyborg and batman at least their silhouettes but from what we did get i think that it was pretty awesome another similar thing i enjoyed over the course of the season are the confirmations of various dc characters from the comics existing in this universe, including the characters who appeared and the characters who were mentioned, this season confirmed the existence of the following characters, and this is going to be in episodic order, starting with episode 1, which introduced to us Adrian Chase, and we saw him as Vigilante for the first time in episode 2, and goddammit, he's such an awesome character, he's hilarious, he's badass, He's the actor just nails the part and his costume also looks incredible. It's kind of crazy because this isn't the first time an Adrian Chase was the highlight of a DC TV season. If, I mean, if I had a nickel for every time he was, I would have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's kind of crazy that it's happened twice. And it's also crazy how different those two versions of Adrian Chase are. Overall, Adrian is just an awesome character and I would love to see more of him, and we definitely will in season two. The first episode also saw the debut of Augie Smith, uh, Peacemaker's father, who was previously mentioned just as Peacemaker's dad in The Suicide Squad. He is an Americanized version of Peacemaker's Nazi dad in the comics, who was an actual Nazi named Wolfgang Schmidt. They chose to make it a more realistic, modern-day racist hillbilly instead of an actual Nazi, just to make it more modern, because Peacemaker doesn't live in the 80s and his dad was in World War II. This is in the 2020s. But they also merged him with the White Dragon, who in the comics is either Daniel Duchanan or William Heller. The changes they made and the merging of the two characters worked really well, as the White Dragon was a fantastic villain with a sick-ass costume that they adapted really well from the comics, and a really well-written personal connection to his son, slash the main character, which he was just, he ended up being a fantastic villain overall. Judo Master debuted in episode 2, which was a weird inclusion throughout the season. He didn't really need to be there the entire time. They did kind of connect it into the main plot in the end, but he, he was just a, like a Cheeto commercial the entire time. That being said, it is cool that he is in the season because him, Peacemaker, The Question, Captain Adam, Blue Beetle, these are all characters from Charlton Comics and Earth 4, which is a comic company that DC acquired and merged into the main DC universe in Crisis on Infinite Earth, so including Judo Master, who is from the same universe as Peacemaker, I think that's a really cool inclusion, and I would love to see The Question and Blue Beetle in this show eventually. I don't think they'll ever do Captain Adam, that seems like a bit too big for this show, but you know, they, they could do anything really, so Question, Captain Adam, Blue Beetle, I would love to see any of them on the show. Batmite was also mentioned in the episode, which is just crazy to think about. For anybody who doesn't know, Batmite is this fifth dimensional imp who is obsessed with Batman and messes with him at times, or helps him at times as well. He has like infinite powers, he's like Mr. Mix's Pitalik from Superman, but for Batman. And he's an incredibly silly character, so thinking about him teaming up with or coming face to face with the insanely dark and brutal Batfleck before his appearance in Batman vs Superman, it's just a funny thought. Peacemaker also mentioned Dollman in episode 3 and said he's able to shrink himself. I'm a bit surprised they didn't mention the Atom instead, but this is a bit more of a deep cut, as Dollman is a very obscure character, but he is also similar to Peacemaker, as he's from a universe and a, co and a comic company that DC acquired in the 80s and then merged into the main one with Crisis on Infinite Earths, as he's from Earth X, and he's a member of the Freedom Fighters, alongside characters like The Ray, Uncle Sam, Black Condor, and Phantom Lady. Also, Plastic Man is from that universe, but he isn't affiliated with the Freedom Fighters. But while Dom Man isn't an important character, he was referenced in a way that, me that made it so that he was a famous character, like a famous person that everybody knew. So that might mean that the Freedom Fighters are also a famous group of heroes in this universe, or there was some sort of multiverse crossover with Earth X that happened off screen, which I highly, highly doubt. Similarly, Peacemaker mentioned Matter Eater Lad and said that he teamed up with him at one point in the past. This is weird because Matter Eater Lad is a member of the Legion of Superheroes who lived a thousand years in the future. And while the Legion does occasionally travel to the past, and some of them have lived in the present day as well, 
I don't think that's what's happening here. I think James Gunn just likes to take the more obscure and silly members of the Legion and just places them in the present day as a joke. He also used Armful Left Boy in the Suicide Squad, who is an even sillier character than uh, Matter Eater Lad. And while this is a very big change from the comics where he lives in the future, I think it is a cool reference. It makes me think that James Gunn maybe wants to do a Legion of Superheroes movie, which sounds awesome because so far, he's just knocked it out of the park with every comic book uh, thing that he's done, whether it be the Guardians of the Galaxy or Volume 2, The Suicide Squad, or Peacemaker. Episode 4 also slightly expanded the established Batman Rose Gallery, or should I say coterie of supervillains, by mentioning Mad Hatter and the Riddler. The Riddler was actually technically mentioned previously in a behind the scenes look at Amanda Waller's files in Suicide Squad, but these were never shown on screen they have major contradictions with established canon, therefore this, ref this reference in uh, Peacemaker can be considered the first reference and confirmation of the Riddler existing in this universe. Also, in those files, uh, Killer Croc is described as a crime lord, and Riddler and Penguin are described as his henchmen, which is just so backwards. Also in episode 4, we see Charlie the Gorilla on screen on, uh, on TV. He was referenced in that episode, and then he actually appeared in the following episode as a gorilla who could talk. And this is a very obscure DC character, a character who I'll admit I never heard of prior to his appearance here. A character named Sergeant Gorilla also goes by Charlie who I don't really know anything about, but he's a super obscure character. It's kind of cool that he was included. Episode 5 and 6 both mention Kite Man, which if you're counting is the fourth Batman villain that this season has referenced, but it didn't actually add him to the Batman coterie of villains in this universe. Instead, it made him a Peacemaker villain, and in fact, the first villain that he took down with his big debut, which also made the news, Kite Man. Hell yeah. Episode 6 and 7 didn't reference anything new, which was disappointing because at this point I was keeping track of the references, anxiously awaiting what they would confirm next. So uh, when they didn't reference anything in two episodes in a row, it was a bit disappointing, and I thought they wouldn't, they would just stop with the references. Little did I know the finale would have the biggest one, yet Peacemaker, like I said, has given these crazy stories about superheroes throughout the season. Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, The Flash, Aquaman, Matter Eater Lad, and Dollman. And the finale gave us another one where he told a story about Green Arrow, which is a pretty big deal, confirming Green Arrow exists in the DCU, which he hadn't already. There was never any references to him. The biggest one is the fact that Black Canary exists, but that doesn't really confirm anything. This episode confirms that he's an already established and famous superhero, meaning that if he ever does appear or gets his own movie or TV show or something, he, it wouldn't be his origin story unless it takes place in the past. He would already be an established and experienced character, which is cool to think about. And the, the fact that the Just League later appeared, I mean, in that episode, proves that all these references aren't just references. They have every intention of trying to follow up on them. So who knows, maybe Green Arrow and, I guess, Dollman and Matter Eater Lad, maybe they'll all appear in Season 2 or something else in the future. I, for one, would love to see Green Arrow because ever since Arrow ended, we haven't really gotten anything Green Arrow related. I mean, the, he doesn't even have a comic book run right now, and Green Arrow is one of my favorite characters in the DC Universe, so I would love to see Green Arrow in this show, or maybe get his own movie, or, you know, another Green Arrow show, this one set in the DCU. That would be pretty dope. So, taking all of that into consideration, I genuinely believe that Peacemaker has single-handedly saved the DC Extended Universe. I got genuinely excited for the Justice League's appearance and how organic it felt due to it being a cinematic universe. We now know that Matter Eater Lad and Dollman meeting the Freedom Fighters, as well as Green Arrow, a couple Batman villains like Batmite and like Kite Man, a couple other characters, they all, they're all out there somewhere, we just have to see them, as it's a large universe including a lot of characters from the comics that isn't just like Batman and Superman, there are a lot of characters out there, the Justice League is still active, it just, it feels like a universe now, a universe that I want to see more of, if, you know, the Flash movie ruins all this, which is entirely possible, then that will be a shame because Peacemaker just single-handedly saved the DCU, and now I want to see so much more. So that's it for this video, uh, special thanks to my patron, at this point I only have one, but that's something as well, uh, link will be in the description down below to my Patreon if you want to donate, and if you like this video, make sure to leave a like, share, and subscribe, and uh, thanks for watching, bye bye.